Hey, what's up? So today we are going to cover the top four uh, secondary or shaping tools in DaVinci Resolve. This is maybe a part two to the previous video I did, um, which was the top five uh, tools every filmmaker should know. Okay, so we're gonna jump right in here. And the first tool is a pretty easy, obvious one but I don't think many uh, beginning colorists or editors or DPs or anyone, they don't use this, they maybe don't use this as well as they could and that's basically windows and taking advantage of the different windows in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to add an extra note here and what I mean by that is something as simple as using a window creatively to shape things. So the most basic one that you've probably all seen before is creating a vignette. So I basically created a window here. You shape it however you want. Let's say I just do like that and then I can click this to invert the tool. So here I would be adjusting what's inside. Here I would be adjusting what's outside. And then you could possibly go here and drop the gain a little bit. Something like this. And let's shape that even more. So let's say you just wanted to do something like this to shape it. Maybe do something like that. Um, so that's the easiest one, but you could also, you know, have uh, so many different windows here. You have a square window that you can take and manipulate in any way you want. And then you also have, let me add an additional node here. Something like in this situation, you might use this sort of gradient and I can hit Shift H to do that. This gradient window, which is kind of softly feathers different parts of the image. And this is something that's pretty commonly used in something, for example, the sky. So if I wanna do that, shape it, and then maybe I wanna maybe darken the sky a little bit. Let's say you wanted to make it look, there's maybe a storm coming, something like this. Let's say I do something like that. Or maybe you wanna, you know, make the sky brighter and maybe saturate the sky a little bit more. That's an easy way to do that. And I mean, really, it's just about kind of getting creative. Sometimes you just simply want something as simple as, say maybe you want the bottom part of an image to be a little bit darker, so I might do something like this. Maybe we want the water to look a little bit more ominous, so maybe I'll Maybe shape it a little bit, just do a window just there. Maybe increase the contrast. Okay, and then let's say maybe we also, let's just bring that up a tiny bit more actually, something like this. And you know, we're not gonna make this look amazing right now, but you can see what I mean. Basically, if we were to say, turn these off here, you know, we start off here and then just with quick shaping using windows, we can make the sky brighter, more saturated, just like that. And then with the other window, you can see that the lower end of the image is also, we kind of increased the contrast, just made it poppier. You can see it looks a little, a little bland, a little flat, and we just kind of brought a little bit more life to it. And just between these two nodes, you can see you're kind of, that's what I mean by shaping the image. And those two combined is how you kind of start bringing a, you know, three-dimensional aspect to your footage, making it pop, making it look more interesting, that kind of thing. So that is Windows. Again, you know, sky's the limit. You can uh, also draw very specific shapes if you want, something like this, and put that however you want. Um, but really getting into the idea of using these guys to shape your image, make it look more interesting, make certain things pop out, make certain things recede, give more contrast to certain aspects of the image, and really start isolating and focusing on certain parts of the image rather than thinking of this as kind of the whole, a global adjustment, like just raising the whole thing or darkening the whole thing. Um, that's what you kind of want to stay away from because that's what will tend to make your images look pretty bland and pretty flat and not very three-dimensional and having a lot of um, pop or um, interest. Okay, and kind of like I mentioned in the previous video, all of these tools are connected. So if I were to add another window here, this next tool, the second tool I'm gonna to talk about is keying, but also keying with a combination of windows. So let's say 
we want to select this here and then shift H to see what we're doing. I can simply click and drag along the water. If maybe we want to change the water a little bit, we can go into the hue tool and maybe I'll expand this to include more of this blue hue, something like that. And then I'll maybe just kind of blur this a little bit. Let's just say we have the water keyed, something like that. And we maybe want the water to have a slightly different look to it. So I'll go to the hue. Maybe we want the water to maybe look a little bit more green. See, it was a little bit, it was more on this blue side. And then it's a subtle change. Now it's a little bit more green. Hopefully you can see that. Sometimes the compression of YouTube makes it a little tough to see. Um, but the way you would use to say in combination with Windows is let's say that for whatever reason you only want, you maybe you want this wave here to look a little bit different. And maybe you want the top to look a little bit bluer or have a slightly different look. Maybe I'll go through and use another one of these tools here and the gradient tool here. And I'll just do something kind of like this so that I am now, I keyed the wave but I'm telling it I only want that change to take place in the upper part of the wave here and kind of ignore the lower part. And, but because we're using this gradient window, you can see it's gonna have a nice soft roll off here, a nice soft blending of from the upper part of the wave to the lower part of the wave. So there we go, something like that. And let's actually really change that so you can really see what I'm doing there. So now you can see only the upper part has that effect to it. And again, not that this is what you would initially do on this shot, but just so you get an idea of the kind of changes you wanna do, which kind of piggybacks on top of taking windows, shaping, isolating areas, make certain areas pop forward and increase the contrast and the sharpness. And in this situation, yeah, maybe you want, when this wave is rolling up, you wanna make it, you know, maybe bluer or a little bit more green. And we're doing that by keying the water and then applying a window to separate and shape the wave as well. So there we go. So that is the second tool, just to kind of keying in combination with windows. And now tool number three, I'm gonna add another node here, is the HSL curves. So what those are is if I click on here, hue versus hue, for example, it's similar to what we just did. I keyed the wave and then I adjusted the hue to make it look a little bit different. But again, I could go here and let's do the entire image. And I'm giving it kind of like this kind of very crystal blue look to the water. And let's really push that. So now you can see the water. Hue versus hue. Okay, so let's maybe go back here. And what I'm gonna do this time is I am going to click on the sky and we are now on hue versus saturation and I'm going to just simply click on the sky and let's say you want the sky to be more vibrant more saturated you can see I selected that hue of blue in the sky or we can desaturate it let's say we go with something like that so you can really see what's happening And you can see it also affected the water as well, but really we're just trying to show what that tool does. And it's kind of that easy. So sometimes if you want to manipulate a specific color, the hue HSL curves are extremely useful for something like that. So that is tool number three. We've gone over shaping with windows as well as keying and keying in combination with windows to isolate certain portions of the image. The HSL curves are two probably of the more commonly used ones, which is hue versus hue, and then hue versus saturation. Um, and then for the last tool is the tracker. So let's say we have another window, another node there, and I'm gonna create this window, and we just kind of maybe want to, let's see, I'll just put this on here, on him. There we go, and I'm just gonna do something here so you can see it. Let's say we want to bring up the saturation in this face a little bit, and maybe just bring that up just so we can 
see something. But the important thing here is we're gonna go into the tracker here and then we can track forward or reverse and forward. Um, so this is normally the easiest tool here. So I click on this and it's gonna follow his face. Boom, and then go backwards. You can see how good the tracker works. And again, you could have done anything, you know, you can use this window to track people, to track objects, and again, to kind of isolate part of the image. So you can see those are four very useful tools um, that you can use in any of your grades that will definitely increase the quality of your grade, uh, make your grades look much more high end, much more professional, and your objects and your images just have a lot more um, density and pop to them and color and just by simply shaping with windows, um, keying in combination with windows to um, adjust certain aspects of the image, as well as using your HSL curves so you can maybe make only the blues pop, only the reds pop, for example, something like that. Um, and then also the tracker so you can isolate people's faces, make corrections to you know different objects or people's faces, and then have that track throughout. So. When you do that and you combine all of those tools together, I think you'll definitely find that the before and after of all your grades uh, will really improve. Okay, so that's it. If you learned something, definitely like this video, subscribe. Let me know if you wanna know any specific things in the comments, next videos. I'm definitely gonna have more videos coming. Um, okay, so I'll see y'all later.